My name is Steve Santello. Um, I am a chair and professor in the Computer and Information Science program. A video game is a game that you would essentially play on a monitor or some sort of device like that, as opposed to a board game, which a board game doesn't have any sort of visuals or audio typically or anything like that. So you're essentially playing on a monitor or TV with a um, keyboard or mouse or game pad or even a mobile device. So the video game development life cycle is essentially broken up into three different pieces, uh, pre-production, production, and post-production. In the pre-production process, we typically will uh, come up with an idea for a video game. And hopefully that idea is something that is unique and also marketable to a, an audience that would essentially buy that title. And um, when we're going through the idea phase, we tend to document our ideas. So one of the things that developers need to be really good at um, is not only great, you know, having great communication skills verbally, but also written as well. So we go through writing a series of documentation. We start with kind of this high level, um, high concept document where it's essentially a a one pager. Some people go up to four pages, but we try to keep it as short as possible. That's, you know, more or less high level. Um, what is the game? And then we use that to essentially pitch to folks that might be funding our game um, or even coworkers or other partners that may want to work on the game with us um, in terms of getting funding for that title, you know, at that point. Um, you know, some folks go the what's called the indie route where it's just self-funded or uh, crowdsourcing where there's uh, potential buyers of the game that will um, front money to help fund the game or, or even going through publishers um, where publishers may be able to secure funding um, for a game um, that, you know, that you're uh, creating as a as an individual or as a team. Um, from there, we we actually create even more documentation. So we actually create um, highly detailed documentation. We um, one of the most important pieces of documentation that we create is the game design document, which you can kind of think of as your blueprint for the entirety of the game. So we get super high detailed with the with the game design document to the point where any developer should be able to look at that document, navigate through that document very easily and then develop that game in the game designer's vision. And by game designer's vision, I mean the game designers that essentially wrote that uh, document. There's other types of documentation out there. There's different types of uh, what we call Bibles out there when we need to get high, you know, high detail into certain aspects of the game. Um, there is even a technical design document that's more of a, a programmer's handbook as well. Um, but all that documentation is really important for our next phase, which, again, we're still in pre-production, which is um, uh, prototyping. So we then take those ideas from documentation and then we start to build these little prototypes, either um, tabletop prototypes or small little um, video game prototypes. So we might use a game engine or uh, something fairly easy to use to, um, to illustrate some of our ideas for playtesting purposes. After we, we do that, um, we of course assess documentation and prototyping as, as a team. Um, a lot of the time, if we're, um, if we're working under larger company umbrellas, we may end up um, utilizing these um, documentation and, and prototyping to um, convince our uh, publishers and producers to move forward with, um, with full production for the game. Uh, because once you get into full production, uh, then you know, you're putting all you have into the creation of the game. And this is the process that tends to take the longest. Um, essentially, we, um, you know, once we get approved through uh, our documentation and prototypes, we end up moving towards these, these builds of our game. So when we build a video game, it's not like everything is polished, you know, right away. Um, we go through phases where we start to um, create builds, uh, one of which is a pre-alpha build where we're, um, you know, building some mechanics for the game, 
um, testing some of those mechanics as we're building those, but uh, we're not really quite polishing the game yet. Um, we're looking at things like gameplay and and that sort of thing to um, to really begin to kind of move forward in these builds. Um, there, there's other builds. I won't get into high detail for the sake of time, but there's um, you know alpha, beta builds. There's even release candidates like um, silver and gold builds. Where as we progress in the builds. Um, our our game um, starts to become more complete, where more mechanics are completed. The game starts to become more and more polished, um, and the the game hopefully starts to become less buggy. Um, a lot of folks that are playing games these days will note that a lot of games release with bugs. Um, typically, the more uh, complex the game is. Um, the harder it is to build and the harder it is to um, take care of all the bugs during the production process. Uh, but we do have quality assurance testers that their job is literally to just keep play testing the game and port and even, you know, portions of the, of the game over and over again, document any issues and then send it over um, to the appropriate person in the uh, production team. Um, while we're building the game, of course, uh, people may wonder, um, you know, what, types of folks build these games outside of just, Hey, you know, we already talked about, you know, uh, game design and, and, you know, written documentation. We talked about, um, uh, QA testers, but, um, you know, the visuals essentially are created by, um, artists. Um, so, you know, there's differences between two dimensional games and three dimensional games, um, that take a variety of different types of artists to, to create those graphics, essentially any of those visuals you'd see on screen, um, audio is, is really important. Um, there's usually, um, audio designers and composers that will, um, develop uh, music and sound effects and things like that to be put into the game. Um, and your programmers are, of course, very important because basically the game itself won't really work. It'll, it'll just be, you know, visuals and audio uh, without the programmers. So the programmers basically take, you know, uh, visuals and audio and things like that and implement those things um, into the game and make sure that, you know, all of the gameplay and mechanics and things like that are working. Um, and, uh, you know, depending on what you're programming, uh, there, there may be a need for a variety of, of different types of programmers, um, that have, um, their own, uh, essentially their own, um, expertise in different areas of, of programming. Um, there is, of course, um, a marketing team that gets involved, too, that I think is really important to talk about and also a public rela relations team, um, typically as well, um, if we're going into especially larger game development. Um, so there is a post-production process, as I mentioned earlier, uh, where we will um, distribute game titles. So there'll be um, a manufacturing process um, for physical distribution or, um, you know, just a, um, a digital distribution process for those digital downloadable uh, games and patches and downloadable content and things like that. Um, but as part of, of not only post-production, but even a uh, tail end of production, um, there's typically a marketing team that will assist in marketing the game, um, a public relations team that will handle things on social media, since that's some of your most important marketing these days. A lot of folks um, don't watch TV anymore and they rely a lot more on social media. Um, and um, and then essentially, you know, once the game is out there, um, of course, the marketing campaign continues and social media discussion uh, usually continues as well. Um, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell um, in terms of how a, a video game is developed, again, in a very uh, short amount of time here. So. It almost depends on who you ask, um, and it also depends on what um, a person's goals are when they, um, uh, you know, when when they when they have ideas or aspirations about jumping into the industry. Um, especially since there's differences between indie game development versus AAA game development, which is kind of your higher end games um, with higher budget and bigger team. Um, so it depends on what your goals are, but. Um, I would say um, a good first step for anybody, regardless of what aspect of game development they want to get into, is to try to become a good designer first. Uh, so the, the part where I was essentially discussing pre-production process where you have to come up with ideas and, and you know, form written documentation, 
I would recommend anybody to do that first because in order to, to even work in a team really well as, as an artist or a programmer or whatnot, you should still have a really good foundation in base design work that essentially just, you know, gets your ideas on paper and, 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 and pushes forth that way. Um, the next thing I would do though, and I would, you know, do this maybe in tandem with writing documentation is to try to create your own prototypes, um, either by yourself, or if you, um, you know, have a partner, whether it's a friend or a colleague, or um, if you're in school and, and there is a club, or if you're in school and there's classmates that have similar interests, um, start to develop something. Um, and when you're developing things, you can use, you know, you can use a lot of free game engines that are out there. Um, but that's kind of the, the, the big first step. Um, you can take classes. Uh, you know, there, there are several institutions, including our own, that offer um, entry level classes that uh, may be good to take. So um, this is good for people who might not really know where to start, where it's like, OK, um, you know, I know I need to create a, a, a game design document, but, you know, how do I do that? Where do I start? And, you know, there's typically game design classes that will get you there. Um, or when we're talking about prototypes and using a game engine, um, sometimes it's hard to teach yourself how to use a game engine. So a lot of folks will take a class or two that specializes in, say, Game Maker, which is a really good one to start with, or Unreal or Unity, which are also great ones to start with. Those are kind of the more common game engines that uh, folks use in game industry. And, um, you know, they might take a class to um, to learn some of the ropes there and then continue on on their own to um, to develop something. Um, it's important to develop something on your own or with others, because those also serve as portfolio pieces for when you want to get a job, for when you want to land something. Um, uh, the uh, the game industry nowadays will will typically ask, um, you know, as as a first interview question, what games have you made? And if you have even these little small prototypes as I'm discussing, uh, that helps immensely. Have you always been curious about the science around you? Submit your question and it could be featured in one of our upcoming videos. Visit cod.edu slash dem and click on So That Explains It. Mm -hmm.